Hey guys, so this is our third Q&A video that we're doing. And um, thank you guys for all of your feedback and questions. We had so many great questions. Um, so thank you guys for dropping those on the blog. And we're gonna answer a few more of them. Question number one, do you use birth control? Yes, we use birth control, but we prefer to use non-hormonal birth control methods. Um, and just because we don't want to use anything that could potentially cause an abortion. Um, and yeah, I think that there are probably uses for hormonal methods of birth control for like regulating things and stuff like that. But um, for us, like we just want to be careful about that. And we're also like more natural minded. So I know like sometimes there can be more um, longer lasting effects from hormonal birth controls and stuff like that. So we just steer clear of those and um, I try not to get all out of whack. <laughs> you know, eventually we want to have more kids and stuff, Lord willing. Um, so we don't want to like mess too much with all that and we'll potentially see. cause problems. We would so, probably stop using birth control whenever we wanted to get pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> so that's our answer to that. All right, so the next question we wanted to address was uh, whether or not my mom still has cancer uh, because a lot of you all had been reaching out and um, letting us know that you were praying for her because you saw her on the show when she was uh, really struggling with cancer and was going through a rough time, um, really when she was at her worst around the time we got married. Uh, but thankfully, um, just through many answered prayers and just by God's grace and his miracle she is cancer free uh, and has been for almost six years next month Yeah, next month six years and, and yeah 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 she wrote a book too um, recently called I shall not die so look it up I'll, I'll post the details here on the blog also um, but yeah it's I shall not die by Kathy by Kathy Dillard Byram um, and it just kind of like talks about her cancer journey and everything um, so yeah, check it out. She's yeah. doing great. She's working full time and yeah, busy, busy Mima. That's what our boys call her, Mima. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, she yeah. keeps up with them and that keeps her pretty active. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Question number three: How do you survive financially while in law school? Well, first of all, full disclosure: you're actually helping us right now because. We've uh, got our YouTube channel monetized, and <laughs> by watching this, you're helping us out. So we appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, growing up, both of us, for both of us, um, it was highly encouraged just to not be in debt. So it wasn't really an option for us to go into debt. Um, so coming into marriage, we're, I'm really grateful that neither one of us had debt. And um, it's one of those principles we just, talked about before we got married that we. Um, had in common, not that if one of us did or didn't have debt, um, that it would necessarily affect whether or not we would get married, but it's something that we agreed on in principle that we wanted to avoid debt, and it just worked out that both of us came into marriage debt-free, so um, that's something we enjoy that uh, a lot of people don't necessarily. Yeah, and it didn't mean that that was easy, though. It definitely took a lot of work also, um, kind of like with your schooling, I'm thinking about... Um, yeah, so I, I principled yeah. to go to school debt-free and pay for it either through scholarships or through working um, throughout as I uh, went to school. So uh, even from an, uh, an early early age, my parents told me that, but then they also tried to help give us the tools to do that. So even before I knew for sure that I wanted to go out of state to Oklahoma State, um, I wanted to prepare by taking AP classes, um, taking concurrent high school, college courses through the local community college, you know, those things that a lot of students do uh, everywhere to try and just go to school as cheap as they can. So I tried to knock out as many classes as I could um, at community college and, and through AP classes and then uh, work throughout, you know, high school and college and a lot of my working in high school ended up going toward uh, school expenses and um, and then had some family help and, um, and then again, like some people encourage and realize like take the ACT multiple times and like I think I took it five times mm -hmm. just to try and increase uh, school financial scholarships so so yeah and, and ended up getting like you know tens of thousands of scholarships between academic and otherwise 
in large part mom. due to my mom. <laughs> in large part due to my mom, who was basically my full-time scholarship coach. And it feels like every time I walked out the door, my junior or senior year, she had another assignment for an essay to write that went to a specific scholarship that um, that she had identified um, within and all the scholarships to work available. As what was it like a counselor? Yes. So something. yeah. So I had an advantage. I feel like this is like I was saying, like we were fortunate to come into it debt free. But part of that is I had the benefit of a mom who had previously been uh, a school academic counselor. Um, so she had worked at Oklahoma State and served as a counselor there. Uh, so she did a good job really identifying good scholarships and uh, helped me apply. And, and again, like that provided a lot of relief uh, just emotionally when my dad passed away um, suddenly my first year of college because um, it alleviated some of the, the stress, like not having the financial stress to be able to uh, continue on and uh, really rely on uh, the emotional support of the base of church family and friends that I built in Stillwater, Oklahoma at that time. So, so yeah, we want yeah. our kids to adopt the same principles and kind of instill that in them and teach them. Of course, ultimately it's their decision, but like we want them to um, not only be, um, for, for them to understand the principles, but also to encourage them and prepare with them like, like our parents did with us, helping us prepare for life so yeah that they hopefully won't have to deal with student loans and stuff like that so um yeah I think that's a huge part of it and then with law school um you know what's funny in this situation <laughs> is like usually law school or any graduate school for that matter would be more expensive than undergrad but because I go into law school in state and because it's only three years law school is actually cheaper uh, for me than undergrad was so uh, that's helpful, but again, kind of the same thing comes down to it. We wanted to position ourselves to where if something like that ever came up, um, that we could make that decision to do that debt-free through savings and through work and other ways. So as far as law school, we wanted to uh, exercise those same principles and purpose to stay out of debt. Um, and up until that point, we had positioned ourselves to be able to, to do that. and. In addition to that, we wanted to look for scholarships, look for fellowships um, that would provide uh, financial assistance, as well as working uh, law jobs, non-law jobs throughout law school that I've been able to do. Um, Jill's blogging, been able to do a lot of blogging. Um, social media advertising and stuff like that too. YouTube channel, <laughs> all of those types of things. So um, those are definitely helpful um, with supplementing income and living off of savings and stuff like that too. So also, up until around the time we left the show, we hadn't been paid for anything. Of course, there were perks that came along with filming. You know, if you were traveling or whatever, they might cover those expenses and stuff. Um, and we were grateful for those, but yeah, we hadn't been paid until we were like really pressing about it and um, ended up like getting an attorney involved and stuff. And yeah, so, basically yeah. once we got an attorney involved and. Um, they were, we were able to recover a portion, at least, of what Jill should have been paid uh, up until the time we left the show. Uh, even if, in the end, it uh, probably ended up being a little bit more than minimum wage at most, yeah, we were able more. to recover at least something. Yeah. So, some things that really helped us overall, going back to like the whole budget thing, um, that we wanted to share were Dave Ramsey, FPU, Financial Peace University. He talks about budgeting, um, just living a debt-free life, all of those things. Um, and alongside of him, Anthony O'Neill talks about like two millennials, college, prep, all of those types of things. Then we use the Every Dollar app um, every day for just daily budget. Derek also has an Excel app. spreadsheet on his computer for like annual budgeting, I feel like, monthly, annual, whatever, um, for our budget meetings. And then Jordan Page, Fun Cheap Free. Um, I'll link all of these things here on our blog. So if you're on YouTube, be sure and check out the links on the blog. Um, but she has a lot of tips also for budgeting, fun things, she's got a big family, and just like recipes, life hacks, all of those types of things. So check out all these resources, and these are some of our favorites. So question number four, 
This is a fun one. Who is the saver and spender? <laughs> you want to answer this one? So both of us like to save, but I'm definitely more the spender and Derek's definitely more of the saver. Um, but I feel like neither one of us are like big extremes. Like you're not just like yeah. therapy shopping. No, not Stress. so much. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, but it depends. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I have learned I do not like, do not like spontaneous budget meetings. I have to be prepared, which is probably another reason why it just shows that I'm more of like the spender is because like we started when we would have our little budget meetings, like sometimes like having once a month. spontaneous, hey, we should probably talk about our budget or something. And then I'm like, no, <laughs> or whatever. So anyways, it's definitely good to like say, hey, like uh, sometimes I'll even bring it up since I'm more of the spender. I'll be like, hey, maybe we should have our budget meeting like tomorrow let's plan this that way i can come to this and it's not like we're deciding on something and then deciding that we should i don't know but really just, having yeah. a budget and having budget meetings and when we say budget meeting all it means is anytime we want to defer or, or uh, deviate from the budget we're going to communicate with each other and decide. Well, yeah, we do that too. Yeah. That's is a little bit different than just an overall budget meeting. That's though. the spontaneous budget meeting. Kind of. Maybe. Uh, yeah, kind of. Like, so we have our budget meeting like once a month, usually the beginning of the month um, or end of the month, somewhere. Anyways, usually like the first part of the month. Sometime and a month. Then, and then um, we also have um, like an agreed upon amount, you know, that you would spend per category or whatever. But if just we budget, think it's like gonna go over that, yeah, yeah, that's what the budget is. If we think it's gonna go over that, then we have agreed to ask each other, like if Derek's gonna spend more on something than what's allotted in the budget, then we check with each other first. Phone call, text, whatever. Hey, is it cool if I do this? Hey, we need this, can this go? Or if it's like, we don't really know if we have a category for that, we'll be like, hey, can this go in emergency? Or create a new category. Or create or a new category. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, but yeah, I've come as a spender, more or less. I've come to um, look at things in a different light too. So um, yeah, like. But having a budget is good <laughs> overall. It just cuts down on like money fights, which is a big thing for most couples. But I do like having a budget meeting because then um, I've, I've started to see it more as like in a, a time to agree on permission to spend. So like. It's not a constraint, it's permission to spend. Yes, so. Um, Which I've heard, we've heard that said before. Yeah, yeah from Dave Ramsey and stuff. So I definitely agree with that. You know, permission to spend and like, I am very particular if we start to talk about constricting the budget in a certain area, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's take this from this area, not from this area. Cause you know, you have to like move stuff around occasionally. Yeah, also, I mean, it sounds like, like a great idea. Not so much in marriage. This. If I say, if we only eat granola bars for the next month, we can <laughs> save this much. And Jill just gets this look on her face mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> so yes, budgeting can cause some we can arguments buy, sometimes, yeah. but. We could buy milk for the kids good. this month if we just ate granola bars. Oh my word. No, so it is good. It's good to have, it, it just makes it easier, I think, to talk about it from some of us who are more of spenders, if you have like a scheduled time to talk about it, then it's not so spontaneous. So maybe that's something that'll help you. Like don't wait until you're it. in the moment. Yeah, it's hard to like wait till you're in the moment and then you like you don't want to be hiding packages or something like that either. So yeah, I think it's just healthier for your marriage, healthier all around. No matter who's the spender or saver, like yeah, it maybe you're just, both spenders. Yeah. But just and, talk and, and about it. And if I want to like change something like I'll like Call Jill and say, "Hey, yeah. like I know we agreed upon this. What do you think about this?" So it's it's a two way street, really. Yep. And I'm joke. We're joking about like <laughs> you know eating on granola bars, but like I'll make certain suggestions. And, yes. Yeah. And then like Jill just kind of start getting a look. <laughs> but anyway, but it's good to talk about it ahead of time. Not wait until you're in the moment. Stay stress free as best you can. Yeah. So having a budget meeting is one of those ways to help alleviate some stress. Question number. Getting tired. tired of this. No, I'm not tired of this. I'm just <laughs> tired. Like, what are you? Are you gonna make another blooper reel again? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, okay. What was it? Do you want me to? No, it just came up because you. 
it just came up because I yawned and you hadn't cut <laughs> off the video kidding. yet and I knew that you made one last time. Okay, question number five. Do you have non-Christian friends and are you accepting of the LGBTQ plus community? Yes, we have lots of non-Christian friends. Um, we have friends who are part of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and I think it's a misconception that just because you um, disagree with someone that you can't be friends. Um, and in light of like the recent passing of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I think like Justice Scalia and Justice Ginsburg relationship in the legal profession was like a good example of that. From what I hear, like they had a great relationship um, despite having sharp disagreements at times. Um, this is a little bit different situation, but like it's not yeah, going to be something. You can disagree like, with someone and mm -hmm. still be respectful and still be friends. And, um, and it's not yeah. something that comes up all the time. Like you're not just going to have a one topic conversation about. Yeah, you don't have to have one topic friendships even. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I think that. As Christians, we believe that there are certain things that are sinful, like adultery, so cheating on your spouse or something, or sex before marriage, homosexuality, like those are things that we believe are sinful. Stealing, um, lying. But there's a lot murder. of things too. So doesn't mean that we might not be friends with people, because um, ultimately we're all sinners, but it doesn't also mean that what you talk about in one space, you're gonna continually talk about in another space. So if I'm around somebody, yeah, they might know what I believe, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna just rub it in their face all the time either. So I have friends um, who I hang out with, you know, who um, we do not agree on everything. There's, I, I don't think there's anybody you're gonna find who agrees 100% on something. Or like, so, like, like if a friend invites you over to their house and they're, um, transgender or something this is just hypothetical and someone were to invite me over I'm gonna use whatever pronoun they want me to like that's a different setting there's different contexts yeah you're like, friends with somebody but like it doesn't mean you're gonna not also be authentic in who you believe like you are on like it doesn't mean that you're gonna close your voice down either in the yeah. in the right spaces so you have to know the space you have to know um, like for example, like our faith is very important to us. Like yeah. our, uh, we've given our life to Jesus Christ and seek to follow him in every way uh, in our life. And that's very important and to us. And, and generally people talk about what's important to them. So we're probably gonna talk about our faith in Jesus, not necessarily like a rule, uh, the rules of things that, oh, well, here are the things Jesus doesn't like, here are the things he does like. We're probably just gonna talk about our love I'm just talking about like on a, um, in a, on a conversational basis. Like if somebody's asking about what's important to us, we'll talk about our faith and about Jesus ultimately. Like that's what's mm -hmm. ultimately important to us. Yeah, but you can have, I think it's healthy to have discussions and even debates for those of you who like to debate um, in the right space. But um, you want to be respectful, self-controlled, and oftentimes I see people who are not. And that's disheartening no matter what side you fall on on different <laughs> hot topic issues. So, um, yeah, I think you can you can be firm. You can be outspoken. You can be... Um, about anything, political yeah, or otherwise or, or about your faith. Free speech. Like, it's a part of America, who we are. And um, sometimes people might not like your opinion. And that's okay. I think like, it's important to, to not make it personal. I feel like you can just... You can have a, a conversation about some, like, it's it's appealing, um, like a friendship is appealing whenever you can, like, have a, a sharp, dis even a, a discussion or disagreement about something. If you both want to go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, this is like, uh, to me, the mark of, like, a genuine good friendship is whenever there's a mutual agreement that you can have discussions about, like, uh, heatly, or hotly uh, debated topics, heatly, <laughs> hotly debated topics, and uh, go have a beer afterwards. Like, you know, you wanna have the freedom to like talk about what you want to, if you want to, with that person. And if they want to, they don't, if they tell you they don't wanna talk about that, that's cool too. Um, but then not make it personal. 
and still be able to be friends. Yeah, so I think just ultimately, again, like we said before, realizing that everything you see on social media is not all that a person is and um, just because you're using your space to advocate for what you believe in does not mean that you should be silenced or that um, you are always gonna talk about that and one topic friendships or whatever. So I think it's important to just realize that, think about it um, and yeah, like be civil. You can, it doesn't mean you have to be silent or, sh or not be strong, but like- Be genuine. Yeah, be, be genuine also and not just be shut up because you don't feel like you can express your voice or something either. So, um, and if someone doesn't want you to express your voice um, <clears throat> or just your personality about in, in whatever respect, then it's probably not someone you want to be friends with in the first place. <laughs> they say, well, I want to be able to talk about this and, and, and be comfortable doing this, but I don't want you to say, you know, something if, if I'm a lot, if I want to be able to talk about the same thing, but I don't want you to I mean, talk and then there's sometimes that you just agree to disagree on things and you yeah. just don't talk about things. You're like, we've had this discussion. We're not going to go in circles over and over. Like, that's cool too. I'm not saying like you can't have friends who you agree to not talk about certain things. No, because that would get old pretty quick if you were just like Going back to what drained. Jill said about like one, <laughs> one topic friendships. Basically. Yeah, you don't want to have that. So anyways, I don't know if that covers it. Kind of a I feel like we rambled place, a little but yeah, bit. But I think this is, healthy. yeah, we're all real video <laughs> from our couch. So yeah. Question number six. Where would y'all like to travel outside the U.S.? Texas. <laughs> outside the U.S. Have they seceded yet? <laughs> is Texas still a part of the U.S.? Basically, okay. yeah, we have a big long list. We love to travel and once you're out of school, I think we'll travel more and stuff too. But we, I mean, we've already traveled a lot. But. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, we like to travel. I think we'd like to go back to some of the places that we've been, take our kids like to Nepal, um central america and then visit a few new places um and go to like i don't know like sweden the netherlands um, i think we should go back to israel's namesake we brought oh, yes, to israel yes, that'd be fun. on different occasions we've never been there together ireland but, yeah Scotland. yeah jill's <laughs> the third irish if you didn't know germany you got german in you we call italy yeah. I don't know. Lots of fun places. I I, I We've been looking up lots of cool yeah. places. We uh, we always watch those like videos on YouTube. Yeah. Expedia think, videos. Expedia <laughs> travel videos. We found those and they're, they're pretty so cool. They're so relaxing. Just, like, little uh, summaries of different places. Yeah, it's yeah. so fun. What were you going to say though? You were gonna say oh, something? I was going to say initially whenever we were thinking about this question, I said like uh, take like a sled dog team to South, uh, yeah. to the South Pole. <laughs> And Jill didn't think that was the best idea. No, but we love to travel, so you never know where we'll end up. We'll see. Lots of cool places. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching our videos, and be sure to subscribe and watch the other videos too, and comment on our blog if you have any more questions you want answered. We're still trying to go through some more questions, and we were thinking we might just do four videos, but I don't know. We'll see. Right on a few more if we have a bunch of the same questions so we'll see. be sure and comment on the blog with your questions thank you